today never would have gotten here. So time had a beginning as well. So the universe is not eternal, therefore it needs a cause outside itself. And as I mentioned before, that cause must be spaceless, timeless, and immaterial, and also personal to go from a state of non-existence to a state of existence. But according to you, sir, uh, the creator isn't bound by these thermodynamic laws because when I pointed out the the imminence of nothingness a while ago, you did say, maybe God wants that so he can begin all over again. And maybe he does. You, the I mean, creator you're, you're, is you're not free, bound by the second if, law of if, thermodynamics. If, if, if this being exists, you're free to attribute any quality to him that you like. No, what I'm saying is... It's is just that you it, claim it, to know his mind. That's the bit where I part company with you. If God wants the universe to ultimately peter out, he can do that. But if he wants to intervene and stop it, he can also do that as well. And that's what Revelation 22 says. Yeah, th but that's not the second law of thermodynamics, is it? So why do you bother with the thermodynamics? What is law? not the second law of thermodynamics? The second law of thermodynamics helps establish that there was a creator. To get to the Bible, you have to go through several steps and see if there were miracles after the first one. And if Jesus really did rise from the dead, then whatever he teaches, since he's God, is true. Well, but then you just misled, Christopher, you've given a misleading answer well. to the gentleman. You said, no, it couldn't happen. That what there could couldn't be an, happen? There, could be, there couldn't be another big bang. There could, if, there could if the creator According to the current laws of nature. Right, let us move to our very natural law. audience members. Which mean nothing to you. This, this question is for Christopher. Um, you said you're an intelligent primate. And I just wanted to know, do intelligent primates have souls? And if so, what happens when you die? Um, I actually think, I, I hope I said I was a member of an intelligent primate species. I wouldn't want to push myself forward. Um, one could have a soul and uh, not an afterlife. There could be an afterlife and no God. There could be a God and no afterlife. Uh, the, very, the, the likeliest thing, it seems to me, is that death is final. No, I didn't say that means, it doesn't mean there's no soul. I, I seem to operate without that assumption. But I would, but I would use the word soulless in a way um, aesthetically as a, as, a, as, a, as a pejorative. And I find the, the use of um, transcendental and numinous terms to be occasionally um, gratifying. Now we have Four minutes for questions, which allows us three brief questions and three brief responses. Uh, and then we will turn to the closing statements. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about you, Frank. I would yield my closing statement time to allow more questions because there are so many hands up, have been up for so long. I do have a closing statement I need to make. Oh, all right. That's okay. Well, I'll yield mine. <laughs> we have an additional five minutes for questions. Thank you. <laughs> the title of this is What Best Explains Reality? Uh, perhaps following the previous questioner, um, the United Nations, uh, I believe, starting with Pakistan, uh, Pakistan tried to have a resolution that made the criticism of religion uh, unacceptable. I just would quickly want to get particularly Mr. Hitchens's uh, response to that, and also because you did write the introduction to Sir Kingsley Amos's book on everyday drinking, what's your favorite drink? In reverse order, then, uh, Johnny, uh, Johnny Walker Black Label with Perrier as the delivery system. Uh, but, but no ice. Ice is a, is a, can, be a, can be a mistake. Um, followed by a couple of bottles of Pinot Noir. Um, with lunch, only, I mean. Um, with food. Very important to keep the food intake up. The United Nations is exceeding its authority in trying to limit uh, any, any form of speech on any subject. I think it's particularly absurd for uh, any attempt to be made to limit the criticism of religion precisely because religion makes such large claims for itself. The, the Quran, for example, claims to be the last and final revelation from God. No further words are necessary after this immaculate recitation has been completed. It's therefore, in my view, implicitly very totalitarian. It says you can't need anything more. And it, and it can be death uh, not just to challenge it, but to say that there have been any subsequent revelations. There are Ahmadi Muslims, for example. They're a small minority uh, who believe there may have been a later revelation. Um, and there are, in, in the Muslim world, the Baha'i sect, which, whose, whose leader was claimed by himself at least to be a prophet. Therefore, they're punishable by death also. Uh, people who say that not only are we going to tell you what to do in that tone of voice, but you also can't criticize us. You can't have another opinion. Have just revealed uh, what the extraordinary dangers of the... Of the um, religious mentality are, and have confirmed that it is simply another form 
of mind-forged, man-made manacle. Okay. Um, This is specifically for Christopher, but I guess it could go both ways. Um, As a materialist who is an admitted evolutionist who believes that all morals are derived from survival of the fittest and passing on your genes and surviving better, um, how do you find purpose in life outside of having sex and making babies? I'm glad you left that in, I must say. Um, Well, I suppose, let me see, what makes me happy? Contemplating the misfortunes of other people. Um, uh, Vindication makes me happy. Uh, Being proved right. Um, Irony makes me happy. Um, By the way, the Quran doesn't forbid uh, whiskey. It only forbids wine. Just meant to thought I'd bring that up. I think, I think it was Tertullian, one of the early Christian fathers, who said, you know how the Christians always have a very hard time picturing what heaven would be like? They can do a hell very easily, and they do. But heaven, you know, it sounds boring just to be praising the dictator for the rest of, uh, well, for eternity. Um, but Tertullian, perhaps wanting to spice things up a bit, said, well, you could always have the pleasure of contemplating the tortures of the damned in hell when the praise is pulled. And I must say, I do get pleasure from that too. Well, it's a good question. I mean, what is life all about? What is the purpose? I mean, is life just a glorified monopoly game? Get a whole bunch of stuff now because when the game is over, it's all going to go back in the box? I think there's more to it than that. Um, This question is for Frank. Um, If Christianity is based in personal faith, and, on, and demonstrates the defying of physical laws in, in science. Why do you use scientific evidence um, based in the objective physical realm to explain it? Where is your physical evidence? I don't know if I follow the question. Christianity isn't necessarily based on faith. That's what I said before. You have to have belief in before you get to belief that. That's, that's interesting. You, I, yeah, I'm sorry, I've believe heard, that many, before you get the belief in. I said it backwards. I've heard you have many, to believe I've heard, that God exists before you put your trust in him. Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. I've heard it said very often that you have to have faith in order to believe. You can't, you can't derive faith from evidence. It would be too easy. It's two different kinds of faith, take, Christopher, take, as I mentioned. It's called, it's called the leap. The let's, problem is you have to keep on making that leap. Let's just move now to the next question. Thank you, Mr. Hitchens, Please. Dr. Turek. Hi, my question is for Christopher. Um, If you believe in no moral absolutes, do you believe in consequences for whatever is relatively wrong? Because if there are no eternal consequences, um, and like let's say I was to find it, like when you're saying human solidarity, can you expand on that and kind of explain why something is wrong? Because if people's wrong and right are different, then what's, why, where is there a point? What consequences are there? Well, I'd like to, I would like to put myself in the safekeeping of the audience and ask, in all fairness, has, have I not answered that question more than once already? But if you insist on it again, I will simply say this, and I'll, I'll, have, I'll have to again do it in reverse order. Belief in the supernatural or in an afterlife or in a god or a creator has not had the effect of making those who profess the belief behave more morally or ethically. I return you also to the question that I asked, which you might want to give an answer to or consider an answer to. Um, it, what moral action or ethical statement am I forbidden to make because I'm not a believer, that a believer could make? Uh, you see, I, I mean, I think I 